Well, welcome back to U.S. History with uh, Mr. DeSico. And if you're here, it's because you, you've probably been learning about the Cold War in terms of foreign affairs. And that is things like the uh, Berlin Airlift, the formation of NATO, the United Nations, American ideas of containment. All that stuff is great. But today we're going to take a quick peek, a sneak peek at what is happening with communism and the fear of communism at home inside of America. So uh, there was a growing fear in the 1950s that communism was spreading or could spread to the United States. So what, what ends up happening is we have this tremendous fear of communism. And, you know, Uncle, instead of Uncle Sam saying, I want you maybe to join the military, now Uncle Sam is watching you. So what's the fear? Americans charged or they spoke of there were communist agents that were trying to get into America, subvert, destroy, ruin the American political system. So we have to hunt these people down and find out who they are. So uh, if we can just scale back to what you should have learned from the 1920s, and that is the Red Scare of the 1920s. Fear of immigrants, fear of different groups of people who are going to do bad things to America. So this already had its roots from the 1920s and 1930s. And uh, if you remember the Palmer raids, I mean, thousands were arrested and really they, they didn't do anything wrong, but there was this fear that they would do something wrong. And then the Saku and Vanzetti trials, who two Italian uh, immigrants who were convicted of, of robbing a shoe factory, and they probably did it. And what happened? They were sentenced to die via the electric chair. So this already happened in America in the 1920s and 30s, but we're going to look at it happening in the 1950s. So let's get it going here. First thing you want to be aware of is our Congress developed a subcommittee to look into American citizens, and it is known as HUAC, or the House of Un-American Activities Committee. They probably should have just labeled it the, uh, the, the Communist Witch Hunt, committee, but uh, they refer to it as the House of Un-American Activities Committee. And what did they do? They investigated any activities in the United States that could be tied to uh, communist uh, groups or communist uh, activities. Uh, really looked into people's lives, uh, looked at who they were speaking with, who they were working with, who they were conversing with, and often would put them on something known as a blacklist so that if that person was a labeled communist, they would be blacklisted and would not be able to get a job. And the famous group of uh, blacklisted employees were known as the Hollywood Ten. Ten Hollywood actors and actresses were basically labeled as communists and they could not get employment in any of the movie industries, right? Uh, J. Edgar Hoover, who was the director of the FBI, aided this committee with information on certain individuals. So uh, they conducted uh, anti-communist activities uh, that violated the civil rights of citizens. They basically took people's rights away because we were afraid of these suspected communists. So you have the uh, the Hollywood Ten, if you will, and the committee was created when 1938 is known as HUAC to investigate communist activities, or should we say alleged communist activities. Sometimes there was no proof that people did anything wrong, but they were labeled just the same. So there's a couple laws, and then we'll get into some specific cases in a minute for you of some people. But uh, really, the Smith Act was the law that Congress created to make sure that uh, the government could investigate, find, go get these people. So Congress made it illegal to advocate talking about overthrowing the government, discussing it, uh, getting mail that, that spoke of those types of things, all right? So there's a couple challenges to that. In 1951, the, the case of Dennis versus the United States, 10 members of the Communist Party were convicted of advocating to overthrow the government with a violent act. And the Supreme Court said that that is legal. The government may arrest those people. They didn't do it. They were talking about it, and they were discussing it. Therefore, they can be punished, right? The Watkins versus United States, the Supreme Court kind of weakened the Smith Act, and they said that the HUAC is not really able to punish people who wouldn't cooperate. So if you were you were maybe uh, you know detained or asked questions, you didn't have to answer them, and uh, you weren't necessarily going to be thrown in the, in the clink. And then in 1957, Yates versus the United States, the Smith Act applies to only those individuals who teach or advocate a direct action against the government. So you could believe that the government was bad, but you couldn't specifically speak, teach, talk about any type of direct action against the government. So it's kind of a slippery slope here. You can talk about it, but you can't do it. If you are talking about it, you may be arrested. So this is kind of a, a crazy time. 
and the fear was so great. If you were labeled as a communist, if someone kind of ratted you out and said, hey, this person is speaking bad about the government, you may be arrested. So we're going to look at a couple case examples here. Uh, Terry Truman kind of backs this up with something he refers to as the loyalty program. Truman ran security checks on all of the government employees. If their loyalty was considered questionable or doubtful, that person may be dismissed from the government. So people lost their job, not because they did anything, but there was a suspicion that they might be up to something, which is kind of crazy. But that's the way life was in the 1940s, 1950s, right? Set up by Truman, investigated federal employees. 212 employees were dismissed simply because there was a fear that they may be up to something. Not that they did anything, right? And so we have this kind of idea of we're looking for the reds. I mean, you want to associate that color red with communism. So a uh, couple couple individual cases that we'll take a peek at here. And the first one is Robert Oppenheimer. He's a scientist. He led the research to develop and help America develop the atomic bomb. As the government began creating the hydrogen bomb, he was specifically opposed to that. He spoke out publicly that no such weapon should be even created while well, our government created it anyways. And uh, Robert Oppenheimer was investigated and determined to be a loyal citizen, but his security clearance was taken away. He was barred from any future government research projects. So basically he got fired because he didn't believe any municipality, any government should have an, an, a hydrogen bomb. So there's a picture of Robert Oppenheimer there, right? Uh, Alger Hiss, 1948, he was specifically charged with being a spy, a communist spy. There was an investigation. Hiss was convicted. He was found to be guilty. Uh, Richard Nixon, a young Republican, thought he was guilty, and therefore, once again, you are. And Richard Nixon, later on, after cutting his teeth in Congress in 48, he will, uh, he will find his way to the presidency. So we'll see him later. The guy that you absolutely positively must remember is a guy by the name of Joseph McCarthy. He is from Wisconsin. He is a congressman. And this whole time period is kind of emblematic of this term that comes out. It's kind of you know, noted as this McCarthyism. So who is Joe McCarthy? Simply a senator. And he claimed that he had for sure 100% a list of people working in the State Department, people working for the federal government who were known to be communist. And you could imagine the uproar when people were like, wow, the senator knows who these people are. And as you can imagine, Joseph McCarthy will gain a ton of power. He claimed that there was even more people that he didn't know about that he was going to investigate and find out. He said those people had infiltrated the government and were working for the government, but they were, in fact, communists. He made these bold accusations. He did not have any true or real evidence. He ruined people's eyes and became very feared, because if you crossed Joseph McCarthy, what do you think is the next thing he's going to say? Well, now you are going to be labeled as a communist. So there is Joseph McCarthy, and uh, he, he said, hey, I have all the proof right here. Here in my hand is the proof that, you know, you're, you're a known communist, and you're talking with other communists. And I have this letter that you received from a communist organization. Was there any real proof? And the answer is no. But he claimed to have had it anyways. And I love this right here. I know it's tough to read. It's all blurry. This is hysteria. And who are we afraid of in the 1950s, 1960s? Communists. And what are we willing to do with people's freedoms? People's freedoms of speech. People's freedoms to work for the federal government. What are we doing? We're going to take that, that water and we're going to put that flame out. We are going to take people's rights away because we're afraid of something. So... Uh, one case example of that, we already looked at Alger Hiss uh, and Robert Oppenheimer, but another famous one from the 1950s is the Rosenbergs, a couple. All right, So in 1950, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg and Morton Sobel were charged with supposedly giving the atomic bomb secrets to the Soviet Union. They passed information on how to build such a weapon. Well, the, the, all three of these individuals were convicted of breaking the law of espionage. If you ever see that fancy word, you might see the word spy in there. So they were basically spying and giving information to the, uh, the Russians. Well, the Rosenbergs were sentenced to death, and they were executed in 1953, and Sobel was sent to prison. Right. So there's Julius and Ethel Rosenberg. And once again, they are executed for Adam spying. There's that word again, espionage or spying. So these two people were killed for, for their actions. Right. 
Well, what does Congress do about it? Well, there's a few laws that come about in the uh, the mid 50s here. So, the McCarran International Security Act. Congress said, hey, we need to keep an eye on these people. So, we are going to limit the actions of anyone. Uh, the government considers a threat to the United States. There's no proof that these people were a threat, but if the government thought you were a threat, we can take some of your rights away. And then you have the McCarran-Walter Act of 52, restricted immigrants from communist-dominated nations. So if you remember your map from the, the Cold War period, the, the door to the Russian immigrants will now be closed. We're not going to take uh, people from uh, the eastern part of Germany anymore because those nations are already communist. Truman vetoed the bill, so that's not who we are in America, but Congress still overrode that veto with a two-thirds vote. So that did become a law in the middle of the 1950s. So what happened? to that guy Joe McCarthy. Well, this guy was an absolute animal in terms of who he was labeling. And uh, there were these televised hearings and people would watch McCarthy charge regular citizens of being communists. They couldn't prove that they weren't, but he certainly couldn't prove that they were. But the way that he berated them and yelled at them, people were like, wow, who's the real animal here? And that is Joseph McCarthy. Who's the one taking people's rights away? And that is Joseph McCarthy. So really, he, he had this rise to power, and then what happens is he claims that there are a lot of people in the army who are communists, people in our military. Well, as people watch those televised hearings, Americans got to see how much of a bully Joe McCarthy was, and they began to think about, wow, who's, who's the guy who's taking away people's rights? Joseph McCarthy. So the Senate actually censors him and denounces him for a conduct on becoming a member. Uh, he had a fall from power, and really what happened with the Red Scare is everyone realized that um, most people in America are really good people. They're sure there may be a few communists around. We want to be afraid of that. But what we were doing was taking away people's rights for no reason except the fact that we were scared. So we are still going to be fearful of anti-communists, but no longer are we going to take it to the level uh, of kind of throwing people in jail for, for no reason at all. So some quick test tips for you there. You have to know that HUAC, the House of Un-American Activities Committee. Know who the Rosenbergs were, maybe Oppenheimer. You have to know Joe McCarthy and his bullying tactics. And the whole time period is called the Red Scare or the Second Red Scare. So best of luck. Keep studying. And uh, hopefully this, uh, this video helped you. We'll see you guys soon.